YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs video. We're going over what to watch, what to expect. I think some people think maybe the Chiefs got a little worse because they lost Legereus Sneed. I'm going to break down how they could e be even better, maybe a little different, which could make them better. We'll break it down. We have a playlist on the channel with all the teams for this series. We only have one left, the Vikings, my team. So excited to uh, get this series done, but you'll find that playlist on the channel. Uh, let's get into it here. The top three things to watch when it comes to the Chiefs. Impact of their left tackle situation. You know, how much does it impact them? How much does it change them? Could they get even better? Could they get even worse? They had Donovan Smith there last year who who isn't the greatest tackle in football, but I, he feels like one of those guys that gets a little bit too much ripping, you know, hate, um, you know, quality tackle. Uh, I know they had Wanya Morris step up, you know, last year as well. I liked him a lot out of Oklahoma. Felt like a raw prospect, though. Felt like he had a lot of work to do. He had the right traits. So does he step in and start for them at left tackle this year? Uh, they draft Kingsley Suamataya from BYU. Um, I do think he's a little raw as well. The more I watched him, the more he dropped down the board for me a little bit. Not that they overdrafted him or anything. It was around that range, but some people were talking like early second. Late first, I didn't see that at all. I would prefer Morris. It felt like he was a little bit further away than Sua Mataya was when you know, compared when they're both coming out. But Morris was at least in the building last year with the Chiefs and got, you know, was active for them. So I would prefer him. But yeah, those guys have a lot of upside. It's possible they could be better than a guy like Donovan Smith, and the Chiefs' offense lines even better. Or it's it's a possibility they have some struggles there. There's some issues, and that's an ob obviously a very important spot. Now Mahomes could beat pressure, of course. He's the best in football. But does it impact the passing game at all? Do, you know, does the left side of the line struggle a little bit because of it? I know the rest of the group is very very strong, but sometimes you're as good as your unit. And if there's one weak spot. Does their play get better because the unit's, you know, very good or does it kind of bring the group down a little bit? So that's something we'll be watching. There's not too many questions that for the Chiefs' best team of football that we're really watching like, oh, could that hurt them? This is one thing we'll kind of be monitoring throughout the year. Uh, number two, a thing that makes the Chiefs very, very solid actually is the different types of defensive backs they have. The versatility, the guys that can align in different spots. So I'm very curious about the total snaps how they align these guys and where and when. Um, just just curious, especially losing Legereus Sneed. Um, obviously, Trent McDuffie's going to be out there, but that's a guy that plays the slot and plays outside at a very high level. He actually had more snaps in the slot last year. I think he's very capable of doing both. We saw that at Washington. We saw that with Kansas City. He looks like one of the best young corners this league has. So um, we know he's going to – we're not worried about his snap count. He's going to play the most snaps probably out of anybody in the, in the, in the secondary – but how does it get divided up, you know, in the slot and outside? Who steps up for Snead? They have Watson, obviously. Uh, they have another, other versatile players like Shamari Connor uh, and Josh Williams. And these guys are guys that can play in the box, in the slot. They can play outside corner. They can play safety. Um, you know, many thought they'd be strictly safety coming to the league, but they can do different things. So how much do those guys play? Where do they play? They're going to play all over. So they're going to give... Different looks, and we think uh, Reed and Cook will be the starting safeties. Obviously, uh, you know they, you know they could have those guys I just named step up there. They could have, in terms of corner, another guy to watch, Kamal Hayden, who I liked out of Tennessee. He had a really good year. Um, you know, a lot of upside. So it just feels like a Chiefs guy. Uh, so they could have uh, a ton of guys step up. And Jaden Hicks, who they drafted out of Washington State, who kind of gives you strong safety vibes, plays very well in the box, can man up guys like tight ends. So they have. I'm just curious the different packages, really, that they give, and that could actually help them. Different looks. It's going to be tough for teams to kind of pin down exactly what the hell they're doing because they get so many different looks on tape, and they always could add different things. But I'm just very curious to who steps up and how – Again, the different uh, varieties of looks they can give that really could help them. Um, you know, they lose a star corner, but really, you know, they have, I think they have more scenarios that can help, you know, work in their benefit this year. So, uh, very curious about that. And then number one, biggest issue, issue has been fixed, at least we think, feel very strongly about that. So, and, and there's more to it than just that. We're talking about the wide receiver position, but let's just start with the obvious receiver group 
wasn't too great last year. I'm sure they stepped up a little bit more in the playoffs, but Rasheed Rice, when talking about just the receivers, Rasheed Rice carried that group big time. No secret there. Uh, you know, and now they have Rasheed Rice in his second year, could only get better. You know, people talk about is there suspension coming? I guess we'll see. But uh, they draft Xavier Worthy. You know, and, and some people's worries with him was, you know, he'll have random drops and he kind of is used in the screen game or the, you know, just a screen or a go for him. Um, you know, those types of plays. But even if that's the case, he will be a factor. He will be an impact with Patrick Mahomes, with this Chiefs offense. And I'm sure he's going to be much more involved with that. We know he fits this offense so perfectly. So they had him. That is a major factor. A guy that teams have to worry about because of his speed, his home run ability. And the big one, they signed Hollywood Brown, who we'll talk more about in this video, who has been a, a very solid receiver. Has had some drop issues, but a very very solid receiver, especially downfield. And he fits this offense so perfectly. You know he's going to play better with Patrick Mahomes. So, uh, you know, whether you love Hollywood Brown, Xavier Worthy or not, they've gotten a lot better in terms of the receiver group. And then you factor in tight ends. I love adding Wiley. We'll see how much he plays. But Travis Kelsey didn't play all that great, but still was good throughout the regular season. You know, you think he could play a little bit better. This group is much better. And that's huge for this team because that was kind of their only weakness last year. So that makes them even better. But it kind of makes them, to me, number one and number two, in a way, kind of go together. Well, number one with losing Legereus need kind of go together because people say, you know, they, they, they take a major hit losing Snead, and that was one of the very best corners football last year. It's tough, but they do have more options out there now, and they kind of take a hit there, but they gain in terms of receivers. So the defense really, they probably don't, it, they, it probably doesn't give enough credit, get enough credit for last year, but as they take a little bit of a hit on defense, but they have more of a variety of guys, but they get a boost in terms of receiver, and, and you're able to do all these different looks, you know, adding Worthy and his different style of play. And adding Hollywood Brown on top of Rasheed Rice, who can do pretty much everything, but you, you, guy that's really tough after the catch, really grinds out first downs, extra yards. Uh, it just creates a different game plan. It creates a different factor for this team, for, for opponents going against this team. So it makes them, it actually, even though these receivers fit Chiefs ball, Chiefs offensive ball, you know, it makes them different in a way. They have different ways of beating teams. So I love that. It's uh, it's kind of keeps them like they stay really, really good, but they tweak a little bit. It keeps them fresh. It keeps the t other teams on their toes. So it's not like you're throwing the same exact team. If it was the same exact team, they would be a juggernaut still. They would still be maybe the favorites, but it's the same exact thing, or maybe it's a little bit easier of a game plan for teams. So Love that about them. Really excited about this receiver group, watching them you know, playing with Patrick Mahomes. So Chiefs actually could be better for those reasons, even though some people think uh, they could, you know, could the defense be worse? Because no, see, it's a possibility. They're just so good. You know, Spagnuolo is such a good coach. They're very good at uh, developing these guys. You know, Sneed was a safety that was turning corner coming out of Louisiana Tech. Um, you know, so they could do that same thing. But, and they have a bunch of guys like that, you know. So they can do the same thing with Josh Williams, Shamari Connor, guys like that. So we'll see. They know what they're doing. The team I fully trust. Players to watch, George Carl Laftis. I thought he took a big step up last year. was a major impact. Um, you know, he's only getting better. So watch out for... I thought he kind of broke out last year. I thought he was more productive, more of an impact than how people talk. People really don't talk about him enough, so somehow he's underrated. But I'd watch out for even more of a breakout season. They have a lot of trust in him, continue to grow. So that's a guy to watch out for. Like It would not surprise me if he had a high volume of production when it comes to sacks, and it might surprise some people. So definitely a guy to watch. And a guy we mentioned a little bit, Shamari Connor. I want to talk about Shamari Connor, who I liked a lot out of Virginia Tech. He had that you know, physical downhill style, uh, you know, punch in the mouth, but he aligned in different spots. I love that. When the Chiefs drafted him, I think I talked about it in videos and on Twitter right when they draft, drafted him. That is a Chiefs guy, such a good fit. And we saw him play a bit last year. It's a guy that was mainly a safety out of Virginia Tech, but he lined up in the box, saw him line up at corner. But the Chiefs used, used him, yeah, in the box in the slot quite a bit. But I wouldn't put him past him to line up more in the outside corner spot. So we're going to see this guy used a lot. 
we're going to see him used in different spots. I mean, we saw him play different spots already for the Chiefs. We've seen him play, you know, split safety. So, again, a lot in the slot in the box area. Uh, Manning, he's, he can man up in guys. You know, he has the physicality. He has the length. He has the, the athletic ability. But, yeah, I'm curious to see if he lines up outside corner at all or, or, or a little bit more. So that's a guy to watch. He's going to play. He's going to play. But watch how much of an impact he is, more of an impact than you think, and then where he is at different times. He could be like that game plan factor. When teams are watching film, well, this that's the guy that he's here, Then he, and that means this, and he's there, and that means this. Like He could be that guy that... And I and I, I think uh, I think Joshua Williams could kind of be a similar type guy as well, but I'm looking at Connor. I think he has a little more upside here. Um, so that's a fun one to watch. And I'm, I'm going to go Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown at the top here, just because he's already he's been a good receiver, and he's been on you know he's been on pretty good teams. Have had some good quarterbacks, but he has not had Patrick Mahomes. He's the best player in football, no no question. Uh, and it's, he just fits this offense so well so well and he knew what he was doing when signing that contract with the Chiefs he he declined other multi-year deals he went to a team that hey I can win a Super Bowl I I, I'm gonna play very well with this team with Patrick Mahomes they they fit my style I fit their style um and I'm going to make myself even more money while while playing very well and maybe winning a Super Bowl it was a genius genius move the most genius move of any free agent this this off season. Um, so he knows what's about to go down. He's gonna he might drop some balls. He has some drops here and there, but he's gonna be super productive. It's gonna be really fun to watch. Him and Mahomes are gonna hit so many home runs. So he's he, I I'd put money that on that he has his best year of his career young career so far. I think a lot of people probably agree with that. I, I think it's very very likely. So I'm excited to see him and see if he steps takes a step in his career here. But yeah, he could throw. A Worthy up here. You could throw. Uh, we put Connor up here. We can throw other DBs like who steps up for Snead. Um, you know, maybe Brian Cook stepping up at safety, a young safety out of Cincinnati a couple years ago. Um, you know, he fits this defense too. You know, a lot of. You know, they're either running man or they're running cover two. He fits cover two extremely well. Um, you know, so that th- these are all guys to watch here. So. Um, Definitely an exciting team. Games to watch. A lot of away games here. The 49ers in Week 7 Super Bowl rematch. It's right after the bye for the Chiefs, so that is huge. Um, the Chiefs have won the battles with the Niners recently. But let's look at them in the regular season, Week 7. You know, that could be a different matchup. I could see the Niners being the favorite in that game, maybe. Uh, maybe they've learned some things after just losing them in the Super Bowl, so we'll see. Uh, that obviously should be a fun one. The Bills-Chiefs are always fun. Um, Bills got them in the regular season. looked really good in the playoff game. Man, the beginning of that playoff game, I'm like, the Bills might win this game. Then it went on. It was kind of back and forth. And the Chiefs had control. And it was a very good, close game where the Bills had an opportunity. But it was pretty clear the Bills just did not have enough. I don't want to make excuses for them. The Chiefs were the best team in football at the end of the day um, in that game, but throughout the, the you know the playoff Super Bowl, obviously. But the Bills were just too depleted in that game. And it was that they stuck in there and, and at times looked like they were going to win. He says something, so that should be an interesting game. Um, you know, this year I like the Browns game in Week 15. You know, obviously Chubb got to be playing at that time. I think the Browns match up pretty well. Nobody matches up great against the Chiefs. You know, because the, it's the Chiefs are that good. They're that well coached. They have that many star players. They have the best player in football. Great offensive line. Great this. Great that. Uh, but I think the Browns match up fairly well. I, I think. With their offensive line and how they they out physical teams and how they pound the football, I think if a team wants to beat the Chiefs, I think you take a page out of the Packers book last year uh, in the regular season. The Packers played the Chiefs so well; they came out just being physical, pound the football, pound the football, get on the ball, open play action pass, look for the tight ends. You don't know if we're running, we're passing. Um, you know, good offensive line. Uh, you know, opens up deep shots. It's just unexpected stuff. It's making you worry about one thing because we can do one thing so well. That's being physical running the football. The Browns can do that. The Browns can play that game with their running game, whether Nick Chubb's out, out there or not, obviously better with him. And they can open up the play action pass. You know, and Joku would be a big factor in that game. They have a fairly solid defense. I do worry about the m- amount of man coverage they run against the Chiefs, against the speed. Their, their defensive backs are very good, but against the speed of the Chiefs and Mahomes' arm, that is one worry. But uh, I do think the mainly the Browns' offense and uh, the approach. I think they match up very well. That's a t- like I think the Chiefs probably have a better chance against some teams that you may think are better in the Browns. 
uh, in the AFC. Maybe not all of them. I mean, the Bills match up pretty well. The Bengals tend to do do it as well. But um, I think the Chiefs match up better with the teams like the uh, you know the Ravens, the maybe the Texans, yeah, and uh, Dolphins, Jets, teams like that. Uh, the Jets played them pretty well without a quarterback last year, so that could be an interesting team. But uh, Browns in Week 15 should be pretty interesting. Uh, and then fans takes Antonot Worthy Rice early impacts. Um, yeah, we kind of touched on those receivers. Yeah, very curious about Worthy. Like, do they use them as kind of like a gadget guy right away, or you know, right off the bat, and kind of ease them into it, or do they use them in all of the above? I guess improve vertically of the pass. Yeah, that's good. Being specific, we talked about how the passing attack should be better because these receivers. But man, Worthy is a deep threat. Hollywood Brown, these guys are deep threats. So um, the <sighs> team's defense is like their DBs got to be playing pretty far off the ball. Ah, it's so tough to game plan for because Worthy you can give screen passes to. Rice is really good at that, really good after the catch. Uh, Pacheco, his physicality. Kelsey can go to work underneath. Mahomes can run. He's he's probably the smartest running quarterback. or Not he's not a running quarterback. The smartest runner out of the quarterbacks in football. He's the most deadly when you least expect it on third downs, on fourth downs. So, yeah, Worthy and uh, Hollywood Brown like make, make the defensive back. It stretches the defense out, basically, and that really opens up everything else that they're already good at. Kelsey, keeping up with his age, slowed a bit in 23. Improved receiver core can help with workload. It's a good point. Yeah, I didn't talk about Kelsey enough, probably. Yeah, he, he wasn't right, even though he was still productive during the regular season. Maybe some other things distracted him off the field. Um, I You know, is he declining a little bit? Or, or was he, yeah, was he distracted? Was he just off his game? I definitely could see him playing better this year. I definitely could see that. So that's something we'll watch for. Tackle playing consistently. We talk about that. Carl Lapp just break out on the same page there. Who steps up to fill Sneed Void? Uh, Casey develops corners well. We talked about that. They do very, very good job. Kamal Hayden from Tennessee. I could see him starting. They have Watson as well. They have other those hybrid type defensive backs that we touched on that they they can possibly play outside or inside corner. Again, when McDuffie's inside, they can play outside. Or one of the other guys we mentioned that our actual corners can play outside. When McDuffie's outside, you put Connor or Williams on the inside, something like that. So many different scenarios here, a variety of things. I actually love that. Jacob. Who takes the cornerback two job? Yeah, we just touched on that a little bit. I honestly don't think there's like a set guy that's going to be playing like usually every team they have two starting corners and they play like 90% plus snaps a game, the two starting outside corners. We'll see McDuffie play 90% plus snaps. But I think after that, I think it's a bunch of guys rotating and switching spots. They might play that many snaps uh, when you combine at like the positions they're playing. But in terms of outside corner, like, I don't think we're going to see a player play 90%, 90% plus or even like 80%, 85% plus their snaps at outside corner in a game. I think that's a pretty cool thing, actually, the variety of different looks they can give. And this guy playing here, they're rotating different depending on the situation. I actually love that. So I think that's what we'll see. Um, uh, anything else in here that, um, that I like? Uh, well, yeah, who's if is there another receiver? Because we talked about Worthy and um, Rasheed Rice, or excuse me, Worthy and Hollywood Brown. If, if Rice is out, does who is the next guy? Uh, you know, Watson. I thought looked pretty sneaky last year. Sky Moore seems to be pretty good at blocking, but I'm a little surprised at the lack of production. He was so productive and just always getting open in college. Um, Tony's moving more like a running back now. It sounds like. Um, you know, I, I think I think they like Watson a bit. It seems like so. Could that be the guy? Kind of lost my spot here. Um, no running back depth. I mean, Edwards Lair I think is a little underrated. Um, they signed Amani Bailey undrafted ba from TCU. He is solid. That is a guy to watch. Like maybe making that team. They are kind of deep. With the running back room, I, I guess with types of guys like that, not deep in terms of a bunch of guys. Yeah, it's a little bit of a drop off, like kind of how in terms of like starter worthy, uh, like he's kind of saying. But I, I like the Am Amani Bailey's issue is he's not like he doesn't have super super deep speed, and he's really short. But the dude can play. Like he played very well for TCU last year. I it feels like a Chiefs guy. I'd watch out for him. 
Uh, McDuffie solidifies himself a top five corner. Definitely could see that takes. Uh, Hollywood has twelve hundred plus ten touch uh, ten plus touchdowns. Uh, tough to say this early, but he thinks that we three peat. Uh, I I don't think that those those are that bold at all. I think they're really realistic. Um, yeah, and Adam Hollywood a thousand yard season. Yeah, I could see that. Can Kelsey return to being elite, which he wasn't last year, especially down the stretch? I think he had too many distractions last year. Yeah, kind of what I said too. Um, I definitely think he can return. I don't think he's like declining or anything like that, but there definitely could be distractions still going on. It seems like he's traveling the world. Um, some political takes. I don't know how accurate those are. I don't want to get too much into that, but could that stuff be a distraction? Uh, it seems to be yeah, when athletes, you know, in general, not just football, kind of get involved a little bit too much in pol- I don't know if he's too much involved, but I don't know how much of that's accurate. Accurate, but just make it a point. I think, uh, yeah, when when politics is too much involved, it seems to be a distraction. I used the USA women's soccer team the last time um, we saw them play in a big tournament. Like it, it just felt like that they had too many things going on in their heads and off the field, and it's just like don't like mixing the things with sports and, and stuff. But a little off topic, I suppose. Can Suamataya, the rookie from BYU, become the starting left tackle? Yeah, or or could he move to right tackle Taylor if Taylor struggles? Uh, I thought he was gonna say if they put Taylor at left tackle. Taylor, that's another thing too. Juwan Taylor's solid. Um, he got ripped a little bit because last year, because a, a lot of whole, I think he led the league in holding penalties. I don't know if he does that again. I, I think he played fairly well. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. They played fairly well with that issue going on. So I am not one bit worried about Juwan Taylor. He's he's still his best football is still ahead of him. That's just the type of prospect, type of player he was. Um, but yeah, I wonder if they like. They're going to start with him at right tackle, and then one of those young guys, either Morris or Suamataya, at left tackle, unless they sign somebody. But uh, And if things aren't going great, could they move Taylor to left tackle, and could they put one of those guys at right tackle? Um, if that's the case, I, I think Suamataya could be a better right tackle. Now, I'm, I'm remembering the tape, me watching the film on him and him, me watching him all year. So could that be a possibility? Maybe not expecting it, but... I would like Morris to start at left tackle, but yeah, he was very raw. Like he went into Tennessee as a top recruit, didn't work out there, went to Oklahoma, and this guy looks the part. Like he is long, he is strong, he's pretty athletic, quick feet. He's just, you know, got to get control of his body a little bit more, but he was in the NFL last year with the Chiefs. Maybe that helped. Suamataya kind of had some of the same issues. I think he was a little, comparing his prospects, I think he was a little bit more polished, maybe a little more pro-ready than Morris. But again, Morris was with the Super Bowl Chiefs last year. I would prefer Morris. So that is a fun um, battle, I guess, uh, two young guys. Can Joshua Williams be a decent replacement for Snead? Yeah, that's the talk. You, the, the thing we talked about there. Like, Could one of these like hybrid DBs uh, kind of step up? And Williams, they've used a bit at outside corner as well. Uh, that could be the replacement, and then could Kamal Hayden have a sneaky good season? I could see him being the replacement. Yeah, he, um, you know, he he looks like he has he has a bit of upside. Like I think the reason he went so late is a little bit of a mystery, a little bit unknown, um, because he was really solid this year. Last year, it was like this guy. How is he getting playing time? Like this guy is like two years. He was that bad. Like so. Uh, we're going off one good season. He did kind of specifically need a, it felt like a cover two defense, which the Chiefs run a bit of. So it's a really good fit. Um, so I think we could, it's a sneaky, um, it's a, it's a sneaky pick. I think we could see him a bit. Take 12 and five record Brown and Rice get over a thousand yards. Kelsey gets 900 yards. Wiley finishes with 400 yards. Yeah. Wiley's an interesting one too. Um, he was a top four tight end for me in the draft. I liked him a lot. Like a really safe pick. Just feels like a, like if there was ever going to be like a, you know, not in terms of production and he won't be as good as Kelsey, but just a style. Like it kind of felt like that was a good fit. Um, but they do have other options in there. So how much does he play right away? Uh, defense finishes is a top three in the league. Uh, yeah, could see that they were, they were a lot better than what people give them credit for last year. So we'll see, we'll see if they can three Pete, they'll be going for it. Um, obviously they will be, uh, they're, they're suited to go for it. I should say, obviously everyone's going for it. Um, can they do it? Other teams are getting better looking at both conferences, but the AFC is loaded. So we will, 
We will see. I think a lot of it's with across the AFC is going to have to do with health. Some of those other good teams were really beat up last year. Um, and the Chiefs, you know, if they continue to stay healthy, they're the team to beat. So we will see. That's going to do it for this one. Only one more video left in the series. You'll find a playlist on the channel with all the NFL teams, minus the Vikings, because I still got to do them. That's my team, so I'm pretty excited about it. But, um, yeah, check out our sponsor, Liquid IV. Code GOAT for a percentage off. Link's pinned in the comments. If you want to play along, go to Twitter. The link down there as well. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.